My name is Jason Alon. I'm from a band called The Wonder Years. Uh, I'm Dan Campbell. I sing in a band called Let Live. I fucking wish. <laughs> uh, you also, you said you were watching the Kerrang! podcast. Don't you listen to a podcast? Is that a vlogcast, oh, maybe? A what's, that, what's the word on that? Yo, you see, you're like beyond beyond the box. I'm, I'm out of the box. You man. really are, dude. That Fuck, was really I, good. You know what? I hate the box. Fuck the box, I fucking dude. Hate the Yo, box. Speaking of that, you're watching or you're listening to Kerrang! The Kerrang! podcast. Podcast yeah. or vlogcast. vlogcast? I like vlogcast. I'm with it. Vlogcast. Yeah. Is that all right with you? <laughs> Fuck it. Citizens, but I think it's important for the whole world. Absolutely, absolutely. Just uh, well, we have yeah the events that transpired. We got a an 18 year old kid gunned down in the streets by a police officer who hasn't been charged, and we have a community in America rioting over it and being tear gassed and shot with rubber bullets. We have the press being arrested over it, and uh, Jason and I have already been talking about how upset we are about it. So. Yeah, I mean, oh, we can get into music too, but I just think yeah, it's yeah, no, I, it, it is it, like like Soup said. It's not so much an issue where it's like, oh well, it's it's focused or centralized because it's a, an American issue. This is a this is a issue with human beings in which you guys, everyone, at some point in every society, other than like Iceland, and Iceland, I think, just like finally jailed the first person for murder. Yeah, well, murder. Iceland's got a volcano to worry about. Yeah, right now. so you have a, you have a volcano to worry about. This, but honestly, like, a, a, a young man was gunned down, unarmed, hands up, was shot by a law enforcement agent who is employed there to protect and serve his community. And, 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 and I think that the, the thing that really bums me out the most is that people are actually thinking that it's okay to support that cop. That cop, the people are donating money to that cop. And you're saying things like, oh, well, he was shoplifting from a store, or he was jaywalking, or he tried to grab the cop. There is no excuse for gunning down a community member, a citizen of your town, a citizen of your country with their hands up unarmed. There is no excuse for that, no matter what he did. You've done worse things than that, I'm sure. You've done worse things than that. Last time you picked up a candy bar and didn't pay for it, you want to get gunned down in the streets for it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, like, last time you smoked some weed, you want to get gunned down in the streets exactly, for it? Exactly. It's, it's, it's putting us in a very, like, very compromising position as, as citizens, I think, because, like, no matter what, no matter what, you are now realizing that someone in this, on Earth, has the authority to take your life without question, not be tried, and be uh, supported after the fact. Yeah. And that's what is absolutely insane to me, like asinine. Uh, it, there's, I mean, anybody else shoots someone, no matter what the, con the, the, the context of that, you are arrested and put on trial. There's not a question. Maybe you're innocent. Maybe it was self-defense, but there's a trial for you and you're arrested that minute. And the fact that this cop wasn't arrested on the spot is in every way a mistake and in every way a problem. And the fact that they're trying to suppress protests over it is even more upsetting. And trying to suppress freedom of the press, yeah. trying to take away people's rights to march, people's yeah. rights to to call bullshit on it because it's bullshit is incredibly upsetting. Yeah. And it's from a police department with a history of it. Oh, you see in 2009, the man they... they Arrested and jailed the wrong man, same first name, same last name, didn't different middle name, different social security number. When he complained that he didn't have a mattress in his jail cell, they beat him till he was bloody, took him to the hospital. He wouldn't get treatment until he had a photo. They put it on trial, but there was no evidence because the tape of the jail cell mysteriously was taped over 12 hours later. And he was charged, charged, with four counts of destruction of property for bleeding on police uniforms. God bless America. I just, I, I try not to get too fired up. I don't want to get too political. I know our fans aren't super about that, but it's just such a travesty. It's a really, it's a human rights travesty, and it's really upsetting me. And I think that, right. like you said, it's everyone needs to be aware of the fact that you can't, it's, you know, what it comes down to to me, and uh, you felt the same way. I've seen you do the same thing with security guards at festivals, with security guards everywhere. I motherfucking hate bullies. Yeah. I hate anyone with a power over me that feels they can do something and that they have the right to do something. And, and, uh, and there's some sort of control over me as a human being and that they're consequenceless for that. And it's, uh, I just can't stand it, man. I just...
Do you want to talk about music? I'm sorry. I got. All right. Well, well. It's the Frank podcast. I don't get too. Loud, yeah. You no. Know, no. I love it. I, this is what I. I love him. I saw a picture. And that's of why I love him. Doing, you know, hands up, don't shoot. Yeah, at, uh, at Leeds Festival, it, it touched me that you guys were, were oh. with it. You got it, man. You I got knew it. You guys would ride for it. You got it, man. You got it. But that and and okay to talk about music then. Yeah. This is an alternative subculture, subversive thoughts, subversive frame of mind. Anyone that doesn't understand at least where, where we're coming from probably is in the wrong fucking place. You're in the wrong place, you're on the wrong podcast because music and art in general has always been aberrant. It's always been a, evolution, a revolutionary as well as part of an evolution. And what we're doing, all we're doing is being afforded and obliged in a way that we can perform and say these things and not be afraid to say them. Like that's what this is. So if you want to talk about music, this is why we're doing music, so we can say the things that we say to the people we say them to that want to listen. Absolutely. Uh, we, I just did another interview with Kerrang. It, it was great. But they were talking about pop punk and like the tropes of pop punk. And if you're a pop punk band, you sing about these kinds of things. And I just, you know, I think that it's more important as a community that we, you know, we're standing up for the things we believe in. And, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm angry at the fact that people are contributing money to this police officer's legal fund. But at the same time, I also want to respect everyone's right to their opinion. It's just I vehemently disagree with it, and, uh, and I think that that man should be put on trial. It should have already been put on trial. Yeah, there's, or I guess you no can't question. get him on trial that fast. That's how the legal system works. Yeah. But you should be. It should have been arrested. Yeah, on indicted. A charge of murder. Yeah, certainly. Um, what do they, What do we got over? Oh here? yeah, sorry guys. Yeah, uh, uh, they wrote questions for us. We just got fired off. Um, who's your biggest musical influence, Soup? Uh, can I say you? Yes. Uh, you're, definitely my, <laughs> you're definitely my biggest performance. In, I, I watch Jason play and think, if I could do one tenth of what he does, if I could do right. one tenth. But uh, uh, musically, I think lyrically for me, it's Craig Finn from The Hold Steady. Yeah, yeah that's a big for yeah, me. I yeah. love The Hold Steady. What do you think? Um, honestly, as far as like me growing up and again talking about like that sort of uh, alternative nature, although the things uh, are a bit fragile with Michael Jackson and his discretion yeah. indiscretions. That's my shit. Like that's how I grew up. What's your up. favorite MJ song? Uh, it would be. It was Smooth Criminal, at first. Then it was Dirty Diana. I love Dirty Diana. Trip on Me is also like an amazing, amazing song. So, but anything dangerous in I think, general. I think Pyt for me. Yeah. But also when I think about you know as a whole career, like a full body of work, I want you back. It's maybe my oh, favorite. I think he's man, been a part of. Yeah, 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 absolutely. What does it mean to be a Reading and Leeds? Um, I, I have asthma. So for me, it means I need to carry my inhaler and I need to be hydrated. And also, uh, being in a collection of artists that I respect. By the way, we did something called renditions. This isn't a plug, but this is actually me explaining why Soup was a part of it. Is because there are people on this festival and artists that we believe actually have some sort of part in, in, in the evolution of music. Soup, his band, being one of those people, one of those bands. Um, and. This festival to me is literally this right here. What we just did, what we're doing now, this will transcend, it will go beyond this festival and people will hear the things that we had to say. Not, and it's not even about us. This isn't about us. This is about something much bigger. It's music, it's art. And I think that's, for me, that's what this festival is. Oh yeah, I mean, to have such a wide collection of incredible people here, like Let Live, like Bad Rabbits, like Pup, like Mast Intruder, there's so many cool bands in one place, and it, it's it's not just about the the people, or it's not just about the bands. It's about the people in the bands. It's about the individuals and the the mutual respect that we all have. It's great to be a part of an experience where you know. You, I think about the festivals I used to go to, and I think about those bands and the influence they had over a whole generation of people like Jason and I, and the fact that we have the opportunity afforded to us to go out and as a community, you know, we don't sound anything like Let Live. Let Live don't sound anything like Bad Rabbits. Bad Rabbits don't sound anything like Tonight Alive. But as a community, we can come out here and play music and inspire people and encourage people to be themselves, to fight for equality, to just be good humans. That's that's really what it's all about. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of drinking and plenty of slinging bottles of piss and plenty of mud fights and all the fun shit that comes with the festival. But for me, to be a part of that community that's so vibrant and so rich and so important, 
uh, to a lot of people. That's really what it comes down to. I concur. Yeah. Uh, I've never broken a bone. Have you broken a bone? Yes. What bone? My ankles, my wrists, my arm, my tailbone. Well, I got my collarbone. You have really good bones. Do you drink a lot of milk? Uh, no. I eat a lot of cheese. Yeah, you do. That's calcium rich. That's calcium rich. I, you know, I bruised my tailbone at work for last year. Remember that? Yeah, boy. I just sit on that inflatable donut. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that was so... I fell off the stage. Yeah, but it was gangster. That yeah, was a yeah. gangster-ass fall. I said, oh, that was hard. And then he got up and gangstered it out. So I played the rest of the set. That was the first song. Killed it. So, yeah. Dream collaboration. You know, it's funny. Hopeless was like, yo, we want you to do a song with a guest vocal. And I was like, can it be Jason? Yo. <laughs> that was the first thing I asked. I mean, we were thinking like Alex from All Time Low. I'm like, that's cool. Can it also be Jason? Yeah, yo. I was, I was honestly just going to say the, the collab <laughs> we just did. So and I've you already, did one I've with Keith. It. That's so fucking that was, tight. That was ill. Yeah, yeah. that was ill. I, I said this in an interview earlier, too. We were talking about everything. I die. I don't know how they always, I guess they come up because they're so dope. Yeah. But uh, we always used to say every time I die sounds like what leather looks like. <laughs> just like so fucking awesome. Yeah, man. You're like, so cool. That's tight. That just sounds cool. Yeah. That's a really yeah, yeah. good Is there anything else on here they want us to ask? Uh, t t top tip for tour life? Tour life. Um, top tip for tour life. I don't know. You used to bring your own pillow, but I don't yeah. even do that anymore. Uh, I just travel light, you know. Yep. Uh, if you're in a band and you're watching this, you're going on tour. I have one set of clothing that I wear on stage, and then I take it off, so I don't fuck up the rest of my clothing. True. So that's that's one. That's real. I was just gonna say. I mean, try your best. Try to get some sleep, man. Get, oh yeah. Well, like, Especially if you're a singer. For real, yeah. Get some sleep. I'm the first one in bed every night. They call me Grandpa Campbell. Legit. Oh yeah, yeah. They they, they we don't have fun ever. We just yeah. sleep. I'm right in bed. I'm not gonna <laughs> sing for the. You know, I wanna. I want to put on the best performance I can every day, absolutely, so it's absolutely. important to, for that. And then your best beard tip, I don't think I have any. Um, okay, here's a plug. There's a company called Gentlemen in Real Life, endorsed by yours truly. Uh, we'll be putting out a product known as the Beard Oil, Beard and Hair Oil. It doubles as that as both. If you'd like, you can go ahead online and check that out. It's not available yet, but it will be very soon. Endorsed by, uh, yeah, it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. It smells really good. It's all organic and natural. Anyway, Gentlemen in Real Life, acronymically known as Girl. Thanks. Wow. I, <laughs> that's a killer word. I just uh, I just have a barber trim it up every time I get a haircut, so it kind of goes into it and uh, it lets me not let it get too out of control. But I, that's really all I can think of with it. I shampoo it like once a week. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Shampoo it. Just treat it like your hair. It's it's hair. Yeah. Treat it like hair. Also go through puberty. That's important. Go through puberty. And you know what? If you can't grow a beard, you don't got to feel bad about that and like try to force a beard out. You know what I'm saying? Like people are like, oh man, I saw your beard and I really want one. And it's just like wispy hair coming yes. out of the face. I'm like, you look cool without a beard. Yeah. Like just because I need one to look cool doesn't mean that you do. <laughs> You're already cooler than me. For real. I actually lost my chin at like a weird event. Yeah. This Very young age. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the problem. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I, we have, are the ones on the back? Are we? Oh, I think those are for somebody else. Yeah. I think that's it uh, for the Kerrang vlog Blog cast. cast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> Thank you.